Another day of tennis action at the US Open. There's been controversial decisions. We've seen some big favourites like Yannick Sinner and Daniel Medvedev progress. And this is me and Ben's roundup of day six. Welcome back, tennis fans. It is day six in the books, and we've got controversy at the US Open. We had controversy at events prior to the US Open, and unfortunately, it's spilled over now. VAR being the main talking point on day six. And was it a double bounce? Wasn't it a double bounce? Callan Sky out, and Hadab Meyer goes through. But the big talking point wasn't the tennis, it was this dodgy decision which um, we're going to have a look at in detail and give our thoughts on whether we thought it was a double bounce or not JG. Well firstly I'm gonna be honest and I think the first look of this I wasn't actually sure and it did take me a few angles and a few times to watch the video. I don't think it's as clear and obvious as people make out. I think people are jumping on the bandwagon because they've watched it many times, sitting on, at the comfort of their home on the sofa. Sometimes it can be a bit easier when you've got all the angles and you've got loads of time to make a decision. However, it is eventually, like, if you do look at it and you study it, it is clear that the ball does double bounce and... It's bizarre that they awarded the point to Haddad Meyer after going to the video review. Number one, what's the point of the video review? There should be tennis professionals looking at it. We've seen the the view of them looking at the at the imagery broken down. And even yeah. when you're watching that review, you can see eventually that it is. It takes you a little bit to adjust. Well, it did me anyway. Um, but what are they doing? There just needs to be some kind of reform on tennis officiating because we're having problems with line calls week in, week out. Are we using technology? Are we using humans? Now we are using technology for this, but we can't use the technology right. The umpires look petrified and scared. They command no authority whatsoever. This one was quivering in her boots when she was talking. It wasn't even, doesn't it need to have, if you were uh, someone as like a referee or an umpire, you need to command authority. And you just, it's a mess at the moment, tennis officiating. I totally agree. They don't know whether they're coming or going at the moment. And I think that they wish that it was probably taken out of their hands, these decisions, because when it's left in their hands, all we've got uh, are people coming at them and saying they've made the wrong decision. And we've got Vance here coming in saying, unreal, can't really defend this decision from the umpire. Umpires in general need to be okay with changing their original call. The video evidence shows that they were wrong. There's a lot uh, on the line for these players and this could have changed the course of the whole match. And I think it did. It, when you have a big break in play and she was a break up early in the match, this changed the whole outlook of this entire match. She was probably more thinking about that than she was thinking about the rest of the match, the rest of the set, went on and lost really comfortably after that. And that was not the type of Callan Sky we're used to seeing in recent like months. She's normally a fighter. She normally gives it more. But I think that as soon as that seed was planted that she's been robbed of a decision, she was done. Yeah, while we're speaking about Callan Sky, I sent you a tweet. Uh, which I'd like you to bring up. Sure. And no it's more to do with the romantic side. As we know, <laughs> she has been with Yannick Sinner. I believe they've they've broken up now. It's not I'm not entirely sure of the all in know. all the ins and outs. I was expecting for you to give us a good update on that. I know you like your tennis relationships. But there has been an influence of Yannick Sinner being with Kalinskaya, and I think this image shows it perfectly. Um, months of a love story with Yannick Sinner and she's already raising the hands and doing the Italian sign. Yeah, exactly. I think, Dropped well, off. maybe it's a... Maybe it's a case that they are still together. Maybe that is the <laughs> signal. She's signaling to the world that there is uh, still hope yet. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't... Obviously, relationships being public or, or not, it's not for us to really pry too much. I mean... They might just want to keep it on the down low. They might not want people to just be constantly prying into the... Maybe it's easier if you say you've split up, like Badoza I, I and Sissipas. I did see stuff on social media that they have split up, but then we saw that with Badoza and Sissipas, and exactly. they seem to be going as strong as ever. So who knows? Wow. The one thing I do know is Hadid Meyer is through, and that's brilliant for my predictions because at the start of the year, I had her inside the top 10. I think I had a sixth, so it's helped <laughs> her out big time. So the VAR, terrible call 
has worked in my favour in terms of predictions. Uh, what's this one? So Callan Sky was never the same since that VAR flop. She is down a set to had admire. Winners face the winner faces Wozniacki, which yeah, and I've got some winnable match. But Wozniacki's been playing well. Uh, yeah, I've got a funny tweet for the Wozniacki, which sort of feeds on nicely. Uh, saying she's into round four of the New York ITF 50K. <laughs> Apparently, due to her draw, she's played Habino, Zarazua, and then Ponchette. Uh, and now she's going to be facing Hadad Meyer. So it's probably the first real challenge, I think, for Caroline Wozniacki at this US Open. She looked great, but she, who she had to play? Like, I, like you said, it seems like a bit <laughs> of an ITF. Uh, would have been, of course, Rabakina if she didn't withdraw. Yeah against Ponchette, but it wasn't to be. Um, yeah. Moving on, I want to go to Eager next because it's somebody we need to speak about. And uh, Eager has now reached the 11th place in the open era for winning uh, a winning percentage in women's singles matches at Grand Slam events now with 82.8%. That's 82 wins, 17 losses. And she's now surpassed Martina Hingis and is only... Well, you can see here, uh, she's in a very, very elite list with e Eva or well, Elan Gulagong. We've got Hingis, Kleisters, and uh, Austin down there as well. Eager looking really good. I mean, she battered Pavlyuchenkova. I think it's a nice matchup for her. Um, do you think that she's getting better as the tournament goes on? Does she stand a chance to win this title? It's Eager. That's all I can say about her. Of course, she's got a chance on the tennis court. She's an uh, elite tennis player. And this stat doesn't, well, it surprises me, actually, but for the wrong reasons. I was I would have been sore that she'd have been in the top five. I'm surprised she's that far yeah. down. I thought her winning percentage was even higher than that in Grand Slams. And I'm shocked that she's 11th. Um, I, don't people I think it's going to get better. But I don't know. I thought, I thought it would have been with 82.8%. I thought that surely is enough to be inside the top 10, but clearly not. Goes to show, doesn't it? Like, I'm interested yeah. to hear who the top 10 are now. Yeah, if you too. want to pop that in the comment section, I, I would love to see it. I wish that they'd have continued this uh, tweet yeah. up a little bit higher. But yeah, I think she will grow in that list, though. I think as she gets better on the other surfaces, does better at the Australian Open, does better at Wimbledon, we will see more from her. Um, I thought that she played fantastic against Pavlyuchenkova. There was one moment in the match where we got one of those crazy shots that you don't see very often where the ball spanned backwards so much off of one of her returns that it bounced on Pavlyuchenkova's side. And as Pavlyuchenkova sprinted to the net because she knew she needed to get a touch on it, we saw Tsitsipas with a similar thing where he actually managed to touch it by leaning over the net and touching it down, which is allowed. Pavlyuchenkova not quick enough. And the ball had already spun back to Eager's side, so she lost the point, unfortunately. But very weird occurrence to see that type of shot happen in a tennis match. Yeah, you had the other incident where Pavlochenkova funded the ball into the body of Eager, <laughs> and Eager yeah, gave her a death stare. Uh, that was probably the highlight of my match because I think Eager's reactions are very funny at times. She they doesn't. Are. She, she does do a little bit of all the arm stuff and the shoelace. She does just do a little bit of. Uh, games from shit from time to time which I'm not that against but um, when someone hits the baller or does something <laughs> against her she's fuming inside and I thought she was going to throw a racket at her um, well, there was one she... other incident with Iga as yeah. well where well it's not an incident it was quite nice and a nice story where she was meeting with Serena Williams I think it yeah. was just before the match and Serena was speaking to her giving her some, some tips and advice and saying that she's cheering her on and that surprised me. I didn't think Serena Williams would be supporting a player like Eager. Not because there's anything against Eager, but I just didn't think that that would be the combination. I thought Serena would probably be more with the Americans, like a Pagula or uh, Coco Goff. Uh, but no, it seems like she's cheering on Eager this tournament. Yeah, and some somebody who's actually sort of bearing down on some of your records and that type of thing. It's always interesting to see if they get the support yeah. So I think that it's a nice touch. I think it's nice to see uh, Serena supporting Iga. I mean, Wozniacki came out and, and jokingly said, I was oh, disgusted that she wasn't coming to watch me. <laughs> but obviously they've got a bit of history, but I think she said it all in jest. And then I think Jose Morgado retweeted her quote, but without the joking. 
And Wozniacki went back to Jose. He's like, I was joking. Don't make me into like the bad, bad person in the tennis world. Anyway, moving into our predictions for round four, uh, I thought that round three, there were so many straight sets wins uh, on the women's side. I mean, have a look at some of these before we go into it. This is what happened. Look at these. We've got Mukova going through in straights, Paolini straights, side, Pagula yeah. straights. Yeah, Sinead straights. Your big pick here, Ashlyn Kruger to win. The one you <laughs> wanted. You I wanted gonna get it, it but... if I didn't get it first. Well, you got it. Don't worry, you got it. Uh, and uh, she it got That's it. Uh, Wozniacki in straight sets as well. Eager in straight sets. Just so many straight set wins. I think round four is going to be different. We're going to see more competitive matches. I think that's all on one side of the draw. We're getting all of those straight sets. That top half, the bottom half, a little bit more uh, three set matches. So these are the fourth rounds. Let's go through them. Give them. Give our picks on how we see their how we see these matches going. But those are Wang first. You go. Okay, and then I'm assuming we're going to do all the men's stuff. So I've got a lot to say about yep. Sinner as well before we yep, do predictions that's... for that. Okay, so let's do the women's ones. I'm going to have Badoza Wang. I'm going to go straight sets Badoza. Yeah, I'm going the same. Uh, Navarro Goff is the, one of the toughest to call. So I think Goff in three. I think Goff in three as well. Interesting. I think we, we're not even going to touch on Sabalenka. We were both going straight <laughs> sets on that. This Man could be the bananas. Yeah, straight sets Mertens. Um, this is a one of the best. If not Coco Goff Navarro, Kim Wen versus Donna Vekic, who has a new hairstyle that she's uh, putting out in the uh, post match press conferences that everybody's talking about on social media as well. So that looks really nice. Is that going to help Zheng. her beat Kim Wen Zheng? Zheng in three. I think it's going to be Donna Vekic in three of, of revenge. Um, down one more. Paolini Mukova. Really great matches here. Yeah. Uh, I think Mukova. Mukova in three. Okay. Schneider Pagula. This I've one's got Schneider at, out every round, and she just keeps I, winning. So she's re really good. But we are in America, if that's why is it. I'm gonna have Pagula in straights. I'm gonna go Pagula in three. Um, Eager versus Samsonova, and Samsonova just absolutely blitzed uh, Kruger with two breadsticks. It, is she good enough to do the same to Iga? Remember Iga, this isn't her best slam. Samsonova, powerful player. I think Iga in it, straight to me. I'm gonna go Iga in three. I think that the Samsonova may bring it in that first set and Iga has to come back from a set down. Wozniacki had Admire. I mean, surely had Admire now. The luck's on her side, isn't it? Well, she's got VAR working for her. Uh, Wozniacki has played an ITF leading up to it, so I think had admire to win in three sets. Yeah, two of the luckiest people in this draw, I think. <laughs> so we've got had admire with a bit of luck, and Wozniacki hasn't played anyone big yet. I'm, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go Wozniacki to like get a bit of karma back for had admire. Maybe she gets a a net cord on match point as well, just to. Uh, Settle the tennis world. But there you go. There are picks. Put yours in the comment section below. We're moving over to the men's now. And I think we're going to start, because we're both from Rule Britannia, we're going to start with Jack Draper. He knocked out the conqueror of Carlos Alcaraz. He didn't have to play Carlos Alcaraz. He played Butik van der Zandstrup. And now he sets up a meeting with Thomas Mahach. I mean, not an easy matchup, but look what he did to Butik. 6-3, 6-4, 6-2. Impressive. Butik is back to the Butik who looked like he was <laughs> going to retire. I watched this match. I saw from the Same. second set onwards. And it was totally embarrassing for van der Zanslup. He did not want to be there. His whole demeanour was so negative on the court. I thought Jack Draper was okay. Wasn't an amazing performance for him. He did what he needed to do. But how the hell, after watching that, because I didn't get to see the Alcaraz Butik one live, how did Alcaraz lose to this guy? It is the, an absolute mystery. Granted, he turned up on that day and we saw some amazing little yeah. flicks he had and half volleys and looked so good. But his whole demeanour looked, he looked beat. Surely you'd be on like 
in a, in a great place mentally <laughs> after just beating Alcaz. You feel like a bit hyped. You believe in yourself. You can give it a good go. There was a stage in this match where, I, I kid you not, he hit five double faults in a row. Grutic just... van der Zandstrup hit five double faults in a row. And I was just watching it with my dad live. And we were like, what the hell is going on? He just given up. And then there was a time when he just kept hitting backhand in the bottom of the net. It was a, a, a really bad performance. And it is probably one of the, the most memorable moments I can remember of the round because Butik's performance was that bad. It sort of stayed in my, mem- in my memory. It was easy for Jack Draper. I mean, the scoreline tells the story of the whole match. It, it was a break and then a couple of breaks in the final set. But the way he hit, he's hitting the ball, Jack Draper, at this uh, championships, it was only ever going to go one way. I mean, he didn't look like he wanted to run for the ball, but Dick van der Zandstrup. He looked like he, he just accepted defeat on every opportunity on every rally. And it was completely different to the Alcaraz match. Alcaraz, he pushed Alcaraz around the court like he was some junior that he was playing. And this match, he... He could have done the running. He didn't want to run. He just looked like he just, oh, Jack Dray was going to hit another winner off that, I assume. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe I could have got to it, but I don't know what happened to him. His mindset went into the dumps again, like it was before. Very strange, but I'm happy for Jack Draper because now he's looking like he could do something special at this tournament. The next match isn't a given, but I love the fact he's saying, I love the courts here. This is suiting his tennis. His serve looks brilliant. His forehand looks great. And he's finishing off rallies with really aggressive tennis. And I think that that's the Jack Draper we want to see. I'm only worried if he goes to a five-setter or a real long match here. But uh, the temperatures aren't that hot. And that's the thing I think is helping Jack Draper. It's only about 25 degrees. It's not 35. It's that, The times he's suffered, it's been really, really hot. And it's not that hot there right now. He's had an easy draw as well. I mean, Zhang, Diaz Acosta, Van der Zanslup, he's not been yeah. challenged at all. Let's see how he fares against the top player because that's when he usually crumbles, um, especially in a Grand Slam. So, great opportunity for him. The draw's opened up massively, uh, but he is on the same half, I believe, with Sinner and Medvedev. So, eventually, we'd have to play them. Um, we'd have preferred to be on the bottom, which is a bit more of a free-for-all. Yeah, However, exactly. I still think he needs to improve his tennis. He wasn't amazing against Van der Sanslop. He might love the courts, but I think Van der Sanslop was so poor, most players would have beaten him. Yeah, I think, I don't know what, what was wrong with him, to be honest. It, it was very, very sad to see him go out in uh, that that fashion. Terrible. Anyway, let's not talk any more about him. I feel like he had his day uh, to celebrate at this uh, championships. He can never take that away from him he beat Alcaraz it was an incredible performance but this one one to forget Yannick Sinner he's getting better as the tournament progresses I think he's looking fantastic I mean Chris O'Connell a tough player to play when he's playing well which he is in this tournament but I thought it was going to be straight sets it was straight sets you can see it here 6-1 6-4 6-2 and just workmanlike didn't really ever look like Chris O'Connell could trouble him on the tennis court. And Sinner, a real threat. And definitely for me at the moment, the favourite for the tournament, I'd say Medvedev a close second. The best performance we've seen from Yannick Sinner at the US Open. Best performance we've seen yep. for a few weeks. I thought he was brilliant. He's turned up now at this US Open. Uh, the drugs must have kicked in. Um, <laughs> joking, joking, joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, brilliant. Um, he's looking good. I think he's got some good shot, uh, good chances to 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 win this. Now he'll definitely be the big favourite. It's all going to come down to how he fares against Daniel Medvedev, who also won quite convincingly. Um, he's got a good relationship with the crowd now. Daniel Medvedev, they seem to all really like him and get behind him. So yeah, I think it's all going to come down to that. But I can't see either of them two losing until they play each other. Yeah, I mean Daniel Medvedev. I, I like his honesty uh, in his interviews as well. He defeated Flavio Caboli straight sets as well. And somebody who's been in really, really good form, Caboli. I was interested to hear how they both spoke about their matches in the post-match press conferences. And they were posed sort of similar questions. 
Um, Alka, he was asked about Alcalaz and Djokovic, which was, this was Yannick Sinner, seeing them go out. He said it shows that the sport's unpredictable. Whenever you drop your level a bit, tennis-wise, or if it's mental or physical at the end, it has a huge impact on the result. Uh, both opponents they lost against played some incredible tennis. It happens. I just watch my side and what I have to do. We'll see what I can do, and that's it. And yeah. Medvedev asked the same thing, pretty much. And he said, look, I said it before the match uh, that, to me, upsets don't really matter. The conditions are a bit tricky. The favourites maybe have less margin than the other guys. Uh, just you have to be more cautious, which I think this suits Daniel Medvedev down to the ground. More cautious tennis, playing a bit more percentage and getting straight sets wins doing so. He said, if I play good tennis, I can win the whole thing. If I don't play good, I can lose to again I can lose against anyone. So that goes to show that's happened to Alcaraz, it's happened to Djokovic, and it can happen to him too if he doesn't turn up on one occasion. So that's that's the conditions here. Jack Draper loves them. A lot of these really, really top players, you have to be very cautious with them because small blip, you're gone. And yeah. this was another interesting one as well. I thought <laughs> during the match, Caboli has an interesting way of receiving the ball from the ball kids. Have you seen this when he's about to serve? No, I've not tries, seen that. Tries to catch it in his mouth uh, a lot of the time. Not sure what this is. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's an interesting way of trying to catch a tennis ball. Probably better than the way that uh, Yulia putin Saver was trying to catch them. Do you see her one? She stands there and as they throw the ball, she doesn't even try and catch them, just lets them hit her. <laughs> Just, just refuses to, she just throws that. she throws the dummy out the pram all the time Yulia put in saver but I guess we'd have to have different characters on the tennis tour and I quite like this one Caboli he's got his own little niche now if he if I see him actually catch it in his mouth I'd be quite impressed but it never does it just hits him in the mouth and goes AWOL not got a big I'm enough gonna mouth try it. I'm going to try it give it a go I think Alcaraz would probably have a good shot his mouth seems to be massive when he's always roaring <laughs> Probably I swallow. think you're right. I think you're right. Something after the Medvedev match that made me laugh as well. I don't know why. We're continuing with the funny Chris Eubanks memes. Coco Goff thought it was funny getting interviewed by him because she's good friends with him. And I'm not sure what the US Open are doing with their co uh, with their coverage and their camera angles. But they've made Daniel Medvedev look about six, well, five foot five here, and Chris Eubanks <laughs> looks like an absolute giant. What, what they're doing here to make Medvedev look like a midget? I don't know what they're doing, but it's absolutely hilarious. I've never seen Medvedev look so small. It's his head for me. He just looks like he's got a little <laughs> pea head. <laughs> look, I put it into perspective. Chris Eubanks is probably about an inch taller than Daniel Medvedev. Uh, so this camera angle, I'm not sure what they've done with it, but they've made Daniel Medvedev look half his size. Uh, it's it's hilarious, but I think keep on. What's he going to be like if he interviews Jasmine Paolini? <laughs> They'd have to change the angle and just maybe do it from the other way, so she looks massive and like over overpowers him. <laughs> I don't know. It just made it's me Paolini chuckle. looking down on. Uh, <laughs> Maybe we could get that one. Uh, right, let's move to our predictions. Well, they draft Schwartzman into the interview. <laughs> Maybe they would. Maybe Schwartzman, that, could, can, that can be his new thing at the US Open. Not playing there anymore. Let's get him interviewing some players. Let's do, do some predictions. predictions. Ben, Go before on. we do, I just want to give a shout out to my mm. man, uh, Borges. Oh, okay. Big up no him. Problem. I really I, like I him. I'm so pleased he managed to win that match in five sets. Bagel yep. and Mensik in the fifth. Mensik's good good player and Borges when you posed the question to me a few days ago yeah and you said which player do you think is going to do it I think Borges was my pick I'm glad I did it because he's proved me right what an outstanding tennis player and um, he can do it on every surface so he's a player you don't want to play because he's got the ability to go far he's got so much stamina I think that's the that is the best thing about his game the fact that he will come good in a fifth Yes. A lot of the, le uh, le the le lesser experienced players, they cannot handle a fifth. He can't. I think Mensik was a bit crushed there after the match points as well. And unfortunately, once you've lost that fourth set, it's normally going to be the player that saved the match points that goes on with that like belief that they can now beat you. And yeah, he was crushed. Plus, he's 
played a lot of tennis, men's sick, I think, in this uh, tournament. So probably a bit worn out. Much like Dan Evans, we'll have a brief mention of him. I think the, the the longest match of the tournament caught up with him in the was it the third set against uh, yeah. he had two close 12, sets twelve games the... in a row after that <laughs> two bagels. I mean it's, it's it was sad to see but I'm glad that he's got his name down in the history books for now as the longest match of the U.S. Open. He gave us something to cheer about uh, here in England. So in memory of Andy point. Murray as well, very fitting after they played together and then he did an Andy Murray like match. Uh, on exactly the predictions, right. first up, Rublev. These are actually all tough matches to call, by the way. They're not very. You could, we could probably go either way on mo- most of them. The first one, I'm going to have Dimitrov beating Rublev in four. And I feel like this is another one of those ones where you're going to keep trying to send Rublev out every round and I'm going to have him going through. So I'm having Rublev going through this one. I think it'll be in four. Um, Rude Fritz. Over to you. Okay, I'm going to go... Taylor Fritz in four. I've already said Rude's my top five to win the US Open. I'm sticking with it. So Rude, I'm going to have winning in four sets. Hmm, Okay. Nakashima versus Zverev. Zverev in four. I'm going Zverev in five. I think Nakashima will turn up in this one. Um, TFO Poprin. I mean, (laughs) they get better and better. More blockbuster as we go down, I think. Um, I'm going to go... I'm going Alexi Poprin in five. I'm going to go Poprin as well in three. We're so so biased. I hate it. (laughs) We'd speak to a player and then it becomes uh, the narrative. Nice. I think it's good. I'm uh, Borges Medvedev. I think it's going to be Daniel Medvedev. I think it's going to be straight sets as well. I'm going to stick with that. Nice. The Aussies. There's a lot of Aussies. We have to speak about that. Three Aussies in the fourth round as well. A Poprin, obviously, Dimonor and Thompson will guaranteed a quarter finalist from Australia. I think Dimonor will beat Jordan Thompson, though. I think it'll be in four sets. I'm going to have Thompson knocking out Dimonor and in four sets. What? I mean, Thompson is playing well, but I feel that these two will know each other's game pretty well. Thompson, Thompson's been outstanding. Yeah, really, really good. Draper Mahatch, probably one of the more tough matches to call, I think, out of the whole of this fourth round. Because Draper, like you said, fairly easy draw um, and got hasn't dropped a set, though, the whole tournament. But neither has Mahatch, and his has been tougher. For Nini, Korda, Goffan. I'm going to have Draper in five sets. Oh, that is, that's going to be a classic. I'm going to go Draper in four. Uh, I'm, this is too much uh, bias for, towards the Brits. I know there's going to be a few people saying Mahatch on that one for sure. Sinner versus Paul. Do you think Paul can do it? Can he force no, another no upset? Chance. No chance. The way Sinner's playing at the moment, we're going to see Sinner Medvedev eventually. So it's going to be Sinner in straight sets. Yeah, last time they played was in Toronto. Uh, I think it's going to be Sinner in four. I think the being in America, I think Paul will be able to grab a set, but that's a, that's as much as you'll get. Uh, and that's it. Let's know yours in that comment section below. Do you agree with us or do you have your own selections? Have you got completely different quarterfinals? Yeah, let us know what you thought about our day six reaction and some of the dodgy calls. Um, But ultimately, a lot of the favourites did go through. There wasn't that many upsets. And you've heard our predictions for the round of 16. Leave us yours in the comments section if you haven't already. Hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. And have a look at my podcast or interview, should I say, with Alexi Poprin on Patreon. Definitely do. You won't be disappointed. See you soon.